Hi, it's Vanessa Love, and this is my channel about the mental health field and related topics. All right, so uh, I'm in the middle of doing taxes. I always do my own taxes. Uh, I think this might be the last year I do my own taxes. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But like, if by January of next year, I'm just like, I don't want to do this again, I'm going to find someone. It's so I'm mad <laughs> because life. Um, okay, so... I started a video about the, the uh, instead of talking about straitjackets and the history, because I really don't know it, I was going to talk about restraints. I just got it all jumbled the way that it does, and there were some points that I just did not hit, and so I wanted to kind of, uh, for myself, go back and revisit it. I know that you can't see the other one that I did, um, but I just want to go back and just make it simple. <laughs> because that's what it should have been in the first place. Anyway, so when I worked in the psych hospital um, for two and a half years and we and I worked there to, uh, 12, 13 years ago, things have changed. Um, the it, It's oddly not listed on Google Maps. It's listed on the website for the hospital but it's not listed on google maps so that's a little weird for a minute i thought that it didn't exist anymore and it, it was a total thing anyway so we used restraints we did not use straight jackets uh there were straight jackets there um they, they were not used the entire time um we were taught crisis prevention intervention that's cpi and it's more about like not resorting to any sort of restraints. Um, I can tell you the process of all of that and there are a lot of laws about it. We always stuck to them as far as I know. And um, yeah, then, then there's some other stuff that I just don't want to talk about that I have to talk about that, yeah, I kind of skipped over when I recorded this last time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm good. It's gonna happen. So, um, Yes, the restraints, CPI. CPI, you try to get the person calm enough so that they will take their PRN. PRN means per Renata or pill right now. Whichever one you want to do, that's fine. I don't care. Like it's, it's Everyone knows what a PRN is when you are in the field. And so we try to get people calm. Some people just aren't calm. They're not going to go to their room on their own. They're not going to uh, listen to anyone uh, and we have to keep everyone safe and so that's one of those things where i'm like if i can't convince someone which i never had to do this but if the lead nurse couldn't convince the person who was out of control or you know some people would rip things off walls or just end up screaming and trying to throw chairs it, it you know it's not like oh that person was sitting there quietly angry it's full rage um, that if they weren't able to take the medication, then the only other option is bodies. We, we, we have, we have people to come and kind of threaten you in a little bit of a way to be like, are you going to comply yet? Well, if you don't comply at that point, you get the restraints and you might get a transport bag. I'm almost like, please remind me that that's the name of it because it is not a body bag. I accidentally made that just switch. It, it, I mean, a body is in the bag, but it's a transport bag. Like we roll people basically like a burrito into it and it's a whole process. It's very, very difficult. Only had to do it once. And um, yeah, you just kind of keep them down, roll them to their side, roll it under keep them down, roll them to the other side, take it out, and like burrito them and then carry them. Um, again, only had to do that once. Um, and the, the person got a bloody nose in the middle of it, so there's just like, where's all this blood coming from? And like, that's a whole thing. Like, oh gosh. Um, okay, so usually people went to their rooms. Restraints had a lot of laws around them. Like, you have to be on constant observation constant observation means constant observation co someone sits there and watches you just watches you like in a chair at 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 the door just watches you it's 
it's uh, kind of boring, especially if someone's just been sedated and is going to sleep for at least four hours. So then, um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, you have to be readjusted and reevaluated, well, no, readjusted and allowed out of the restraints for at least 15 minutes every four hours. At eight hours, it might even be two hours. Two hours, the, like the doctors would always kind of decide these things. Sometimes it was like, oh, this person's like really out of control. We'll reevaluate this in like four hours. I want to say that sometimes like there were situations where it was like, let's revisit this after two hours. Um, again, this is all stuff that's very hard for me to talk about because this is a different life. You know, like that's a lifetime ago. That's not, I can't imagine putting my hands on anyone. And after a while of like watching um, one of the uh, people in pastoral care like not participate, I think I stopped participating in uh, codes in in all of this holding people down and making sure they get medications and all of that because like it's not something that I want to do like that just I don't know no uh yeah sorry that's a whole other part that I haven't even visited yet anyway so um you can't be in restraints more than 24 hours Again, you're reassessed. I think there was only one person who was in restraints in the two and a half years that I worked there, um, while I was there, anyway, um, who was in restraints past 24 hours because they couldn't calm down. Um, I can't remember. There's no memory or recollection at all of what they might have been going through or what they might have done that re required that. Um, so, yeah, there's all of these things that I just want to skip over where I'm like, and... So if we, if you really just were out of, the patient was really just out of control um, and we had all the people there, then we might um, put our hands on people and keep them down. And um, it was, um, and then uh, if you don't take a pill by mouth, you still get that medication. So they would, uh, pull out, like pull down the, the pants a little bit, um, and you would get um, a shot in your butt cheek. And that is called booty juice because we have to have a sense of humor about these things. It's not uh, obviously an easy job or an easy thing to do, and um, I know that there are some people who actually like the experience. I can't imagine having your butt cheek exposed to a group of medical professionals can be any th there's no dignity in that like there there's no there's almost no respect in it but like some people like it some people sought that out uh th there's some re-traumatization for some people about that of yeah i'm not gonna get into the details but i'm sure you can imagine mm -hmm. anyway so there's that um, restraints went on the bed. The beds were made for that specifically. Uh, if the, the person can still kind of sit up a little bit enough that like, um, there usually was like a net that was attached to, um, the, the person or like to the bed, um, to keep them down more restrained. Um, and then what's the other part of that? If they were spitting, we would put a spit guard on them, um, so that we weren't exposed to any... Uh, biohazard um, to, to any spit, to any germs, you know, that that can be, um, I mean, that's a weapon, you know. Um, let's see. So yeah, as I said, there are very strict laws about that. There's, there's always a write-up why, what, I don't know where it goes because that's one of those things where I'm like, okay, so in organizations like that, because it's a hospital, there's JCO. The Joint Commission on Hospitable Organizations and they come in and they check like your records and they check different things and I think that's hopefully some place where that's kept maybe it's kept with the state I have no idea I had to do a lot of writing that I'm like I think that just sits in a basement now if it still exists cool great glad did all a lot of work and had to write notes for everyone who came to group and uh, I don't you know, there's sometimes where that seems just very futile. 
uh, and there's like late notes and all of these other things that I'm just like, this doesn't actually exist. Like, ethically, you should keep notes. Technically, you don't have to. Like, it, it again, ethically, you should. Technically, you don't have to. Anyway. <sighs> there were deaths, not at my hospital. Uh, not, at, not at the psych place where I worked. Uh, there was one medical emergency where the person was transported to a hospital and eventually passed, but they, I think, like, he was okay before he let, like, they had stabilized him before he got, you know, so, like, it's one of those things where I'm like, can't say that he passed away at the, uh, on campus because he was somewhere else. Uh, he was fine when he left. Um, not fine, but stabilized when he left, uh, thanks to our nurses. And, um, so, across state lines, there were a couple of incidences where people were restrained and left alone and then, uh, succumbed to, uh, suffocation, I believe, or something like that. Uh, something had happened and, uh, it, it, whatever was done was, all of it was wrong. Um, and it, it, that, um... I know that some people get very upset by that type of stuff. It is very upsetting, and uh, I think every, that's why I mentioned that these things were documented and were reported somewhere, because like then they go over the reports um, and like what has kind of happened and what needs to change. Um, I, as far as I know, gosh, a couple of years ago there were like maybe like. A room that you went into like not an isolation room but like a reflection room so you can think about what you did um, so that like and you maybe weren't allowed to talk or I don't know there was something like you're not in socializing you're separate because of something happening um, I wasn't very clear on the details of any of that. Um, I also like had one brief conversation with someone, so I have no idea what what the program looks like now. So uh, I, it's very possible that they don't do restraints anymore. Um, I have no idea of knowing whether or not. Actually, I mean, I could call. I could I could reach out to some people, but do I want to? Not really. Um, it, not that like they're not great people. That they're, I still keep in contact with some of them or friends, you know, on Instagram or whatever, but like it's not, like it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, we regularly talk and, you know, this is what's going on. It's like, oh yeah, we're, we're friends. We keep updated with each other, you know, the way that social media does. So, um, yeah, like I, I don't think that they're doing it anymore because of these issues that had happened in other states. And, um, you know, no one wants to be known for, like, doing that same thing that, you know, other places have been reported that, the, you know, it, it was abused and, and that people are, you know, have passed. No one wants to be still associated with that, you know. I think one of the reasons why, maybe, hopefully, straitjackets were not used when I worked there was because uh, being in isolation and also, like, it's like, I just imagine that it would, like, that there would be ways to hurt yourself while you're in that position that, like, aren't helpful to your mental health. So, like, why continue to do this? Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad that that that, that was not a thing. Um, in CPI, they do, like, they do teach you at that point how to, like, hold someone, do, like, a, a restraining hold. Um, that was not something that, I mean, I never did it. I don't know if anyone else did. Now, there are concerns that this type of stuff was used in order to, like, threaten people, like, you better behave or we're gonna, you know, give you booty juice. And that did happen occasionally. Um, we tried to, like, not have that as, like, a thing that would happen regularly, especially if there was some rule or something, like, we had heard that, like, uh, like that this was kind of coming out about these type of programs. So, like... Yeah, uh, we don't, yeah, uh, that, that doesn't seem like something we'd probably continue. Um, and also we check each other, like, like, it's a very weird, it was a very weird community environment, um, where sometimes, like, 
no one had each other's back and then other times everyone had each other's back so i don't know like we protect each other but we don't uh i think there are probably a lot of places that are like that and that's one of those things um i have read 10 days in the madhouse i think the only thing that is still <laughs> accurate to uh that book is uh the attitudes of like different types of nurses and different types of um what you want to call it like people who would work in a place like that um let's see i'm just trying to think uh kind of differences because i did i did read it but it's been a while um i i think i read it while i was in college and in grad school and while i was still working there um things like uh they had like in they they had individual locked doors uh, that's not what we did we didn't lock people in their rooms um we actually locked people out of their rooms um because there was there were a couple of people who would just want to sleep all day and we didn't feel like that was like a productive thing so like lock the room lock their room during the day um obviously they can go and sleep in there um and then uh like we know more about hygiene so we're not taking baths in the same water or having the one washcloth for everyone um yeah jesus i'm glad about that but like yeah there are some nurses and some staff who just don't give a shit about their job they're just there for a paycheck and god forbid you bother them with anything uh, there are some people who generally care and really want others to do well and they're always they always come with kindness they, you know and doctors kind of the same way uh, yeah I'm like I'm not gonna get too much more into any of the other details because it's kind of one of those things where I'm like oh geez uh, I think I've talked before about how some people think that if you get admitted to one like to a psych hospital that you'll be able to just like unalive yourself in one and I'm like that that's not how that works <laughs> like they watch you and make sure that you're not going to do it like the CO the constant observation that's also for people who are like you know questioning their existence um you know in the way that they want to unalive themselves so like it's a thing um like we just don't Jesus sorry um yeah uh there's oh so much anyway um i hope that was helpful for you Ugh. all right i will talk with you guys soon all right thanks